first pick for the year is Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. I've only read a handful of Dicks, I think three of them, and it's three of the big ones. This one, Androids, Androids, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep when I was a kid, so it doesn't really count, and Ubik. Of those three, Man in the High Castle, definitely my favorite. It is in a, uh, an alternate timeline where the Axis powers won World War II, and the United States is split down the middle. The East is occupied by the Nazis, and the West is governed by Japan. I found the characters and I guess the sociological elements of it extremely compelling and sophisticated. This was really the first major PKD work I've read as an adult. And as an outsider, his reputation, I have to admit, this will probably anger some people. It kind of annoys me on some level, or it doesn't read as something I would be all that excited about, but this changed my mind. The next one is Star of the Unborn by Franz Verfel. Found it by chance at a library book sale, bought it for probably a quarter or 50 cents, and it's a big fat book. I think it's around 700 pages long, and I rolled it on the random name picker when I was still using that to select from the sci fi place in my book collection back at home. I'm in Mexico now. And I'm really glad that I got that stroke of luck. It's probably one of my biggest strokes of luck as a reader in my career as a reader, much less as a YouTuber, because I think it's probably the most unjustly obscure science fiction book that I'm aware of. I'm sure there are others out there. It was written and published right at the end of World War II. And I think because he was German, he was a German American, I think that had something to do with its, its reception. It was not welcomed by critics at all. But if you go back and reread it, I think it's more sophisticated, more beautiful, and more profound than just about any other science fiction that I've read from around that period, or I will say it stands toe to toe with the great works. It's sort of a dying earth story. It takes place in a very distant future. And uh, if you've read Past Master by Ari Lafferty, or if you're familiar with it, I think this is my belief based on my beliefs that Past Master is an homage to Star of the Unborn. It's a very difficult book to get now that I've told the world about it. If you could find a copy, I would get it. I would get into the plot, but it would, it would take up too much time, I think. I think it's wonderful. If you're into philosophical science fiction or if you're into science fiction with religious overtones, then that one might be for you. Or if you just like really detailed, rich world building and the speculative part of speculative fiction, then have Star of the Unborn on your radar. Burning Chrome by William Gibson is superb. I don't like it quite as much as Neuromancer. It's a short story collection and it contains the germinal seeds of uh, the Sprawl universe, which is the trilogy uh, that begins with Neuromancer and then goes on to um, Count Zero and then Mona Lisa Overdrive. I haven't read those two, but Neuromancer is one of my favorite books of all time. And if you like Neuromancer, then certainly Burning Chrome should be on your radar. And it shows more range from Gibson. Everything that he writes is good or that I have read is good. And it contains the stereotypical Gibson, the cyberpunk hard edged stuff. And it, it also has a little bit more of a whimsical side of Gibson. The story, the Gernsback continuum stands out in my mind. It's a great little piece of satire of genre fiction. It's also a wonderful and wonderfully written story on its own rights. Uh, I think Gibson is probably in the top five percentile of prose stylists in uh, science fiction. Other Days, Other Eyes by Bob Shaw. It's a fix-up novel, meaning it's constituted of short stories. The centerpiece of the novel is a technology invented by the protagonist of the novel called slow glass. It's a kind of material that takes in light and then releases it on the other side on a delay. So you can hang it up, let's say, in your apartment after being set out uh, to observe a seascape for a couple months and then you'll have a couple months of having a completely realistic window out onto the beach scene. This has all sorts of implications for how culture and society works and also for criminal justice. The book delves into that. There are a couple of really beautiful pieces of writing in Other Days, Other Eyes and a couple of pretty horrifying bits of um, speculation and there's a little bit of detective work and almost police procedural stuff in there 
That wasn't my favorite part, but it's certainly not bad. Dawn by Octavia Butler has been read pretty widely and for good reason. It's about aliens that come to Earth and kidnap a handful of humans, bring them back to a spaceship right after a nuclear apocalypse almost wipes us out. And Dawn follows a protagonist named Lilith as she acculturates to life on this ship and establishes a relationship with the aliens. It's a phenomenal bit of psychological horror. Very low on gore, pretty much no blood and guts, um, but it just gets under your skin and it creeps around, skulks around in your brain. Uh, there are parts of this that were so unsettling to me that I actually had to stand up, set the book down, and walk to the bathroom and get a glass of water, which might sound like I'm juicing it up for the sake of effect, but I'm really not. It really actually creeped me out pretty bad. The Final Circle of Paradise by Arkady and Boris Dragatsky um, is a difficult book and it's a very strange book. If you like dystopian fiction and you want a new flavor, if you would like an inversion of the typical formula of dystopian fiction, which is the individual being oppressed and suppressed by the collective, if you would like a piece of dystopian fiction that is about the collective being oppressed by individualism, then consider Final Circle of Paradise. It's a very cryptically written book. I didn't actually enjoy reading it all that much, but at the end when I had the bigger picture, and I can't give you the bigger picture for want of spoilers, uh, I appreciated it much more and I was very happy that I had read it. I think it's worth the relatively significant amount of effort that you'll have to put into it. Very loosely, it's about a cosmonaut who comes back to Earth and goes on a vacation to the seaside town where everything seems to be perfect, but everything is not perfect. And I really can't give you anything more without spoiling. Farewell, Earth's Bliss by D.G. Compton is one of the grimmest novels that I've ever read. I would put it on par with The Genocides by Thomas Dish in terms of how bleak it is. I might like it a little bit more than Genocides. I'm not quite sure. It has a lot of the same themes, too. It plays around with the idea of religion. It's more ambiguous in this than it is in Genocide, certainly, where it's completely unambiguous. It's about a ship of exiles who are sent to Mars to join up with a colony. It's basically a penal colony of political dissidents and criminals who have been sent off of Earth to live on Mars. They have to eke out a very hard scrabble existence. It is a little bit of a tough one to recommend because it's so violent and it's so dark, and it's also filled with really hard racial language, not maliciously on the part of Compton at all. It's a portrayal of bigotry and racism and so forth, or that, that is a big component part of it. It's a very short novel, but despite its length, it covers a ton of ground and it drops you right into the action and it's so vividly realized. The characters are all wonderful. One of the best endings of any novel that I've read in science fiction as well. The Last Castle by Jack Vance. Very short. I think it's technically a novella. I think this would be a great starting off point for Jack Vance. It's more straightforward and more coherent than The Dying Earth, which is still my favorite Jack Vance book. But it has a lot of the same elements in terms of how the world is built and how the writing is. The writing is a little more accessible than in Dying Earth, but it has that Jack Vance flavor. Extremely erudite academic even. People live in castles that are run by a slave cast of aliens and the aliens eventually rebel. And the last castle is about humanity's attempt to understand the rebellion and also suppress it. Great, phenomenal book. Ice by Anna Kavan is an extremely hard book to describe. Another short one, it is an experimental book that is categorized as science fiction. I think you could just as readily categorize it as literary fiction. If you like experimental fiction, if you like modernist fiction, then you'll probably like Ice. It took me a minute to acclimate to it and get used to it, but by the end I was completely blown away. I think this is one of the finest pieces of science fiction that I've read. I do consider it science fiction. It is one of those books that I think you could read a dozen times and apply different readings to it and it would bear those readings out. It's about a guy who becomes infatuated with this woman. It's not really a love triangle, it's more these two men competing for ownership of her quite literally and her fleeing them. The background is a political dystopia that is on the verge of nuclear war and behind that there is a giant sheet of ice that's descending from 
the North Pole and consuming the landscape in front of it very rapidly. It's this loopy narrative. Um, it reminds me, I haven't read it in forever, so this might not be accurate, but for some reason my gut tells me this is true. It reminds me of a book called The Journal of Albion Moonlight by Kenneth Patchen. Um, it's this hallucinatory odyssey of these recurring, almost like fever dream visions of things happening. It has this really strange episodic structure where the protagonist will have one of these visions and it's not clear if the vision is real or if it isn't real and it'll be uh, intensely violent and people will die then those same characters that died will pop back up in different circumstances. I think it's a great achievement. It's one of those books that you probably should read a few times. Decay of the Angel by Yukio Mishima. This is a complicated one to talk about and to recommend. It's the final book in the Sea of Fertility Tetralogy, which is his final work. I'm going to use this as a placeholder to recommend Yukio Mishima, period, because I don't think you should do what I did, which is read this one because you found it at a used bookstore in Mexico and you hadn't read the other books. I think probably start at the beginning or start with one of his more, I guess, user-friendly works. Uh, Confessions of Damascus is his most famous. That's the one that most people have read. And do a little bit of homework on Mishima and uh, see if he's someone that you're curious about. One of the weirdest people in uh, the history of literature, but I loved it. Um, Mishima is probably top three in terms of the incredible beauty and power of the writing. Also found a copy of Beyond Apollo by Barry Malzberg on that same bookstore visit, and I'm glad that I spent 400 pesos on it, which is probably around like between 20 and 25 bucks. It was worth it. It is his most famous book and also was the first Malzberg that I've read and it just hit me right on the sweet spot because I like that genre of science fiction a hell of a lot. If you like Silverberg and Spinrad, people like this, you'll probably like Malzberg or at least this one that I've read. It's a satire of the space program and also a highly experimental and difficult novel with a, an unreliable narrator that's about a two-man mission to Venus and the captain dies. I'm not spoiling much because that's in the first chapter. And the surviving member of that expedition comes back to Earth, is institutionalized, and is interrogated by state agents who can't get the truth out of them. And uh, the narrative devolves into this really complicated nested doll of different conflicting narratives and narrative styles. And it's this weird narrative technique that, um, I, I know that I'm saying the word narrative too much, this weird narrative technique that Malzberg uses where the character disassociates with his own ego. So it's told in both first and third person perspective, which is really bizarre, but it works wonderfully well. Highly sexually graphic book. And if you love the space program and it gives you a sense of, of patriotic pride, then you'll probably not like Beyond Apollo, or maybe you, you have to set those feelings aside to read it, but highly recommend it. I really, really, really like that book. And finally, probably I think my biggest recommendation and my favorite on the whole list is Bad Brains by Kathy Koja. I just reviewed this and I gave it a 10 out of 10. And I, I think the other, the last book that I gave a 10 out of 10 to was probably Roadside Picnic by Mr. Gatsky's. I can't compare it to a whole lot, in the horror genre, it is a horror novel because I, I haven't read that much horror, but one of the reasons why I did give it a 10 is because it opened up horror for me. I have, I think, a 15 or 17 minute long video on my Patreon that you can access where I talk about my feelings completely, and uh, it's five bucks. I put up reviews of every single book that I read as I read them, so you get them in advance of the summary videos on YouTube, and I go into greater depth and detail about the books that I read there than I do on the YouTube channel. And I think at this point I actually update the Patreon more than I update this channel. So anyway, five bucks. Kathy Coach is most famous for The Cypher, which was her debut novel, and this came right afterwards. And I haven't read The Cypher, but I'm sure it's also excellent. This is a, a psychological, it's not even a psychological horror, it's like an emotional horror. It's about a guy that falls, cracks his head on the pavement, and um, is hospitalized with chain seizures that make him hallucinate potentially this silvery monster. It destroys his life and destroys his mind and he just progressively deteriorates as the narrative moves forward and it's so harrowing and it's so grim and it's written with this very Gen X flinty style where it all takes place in the parking lot of the 7-Eleven for the most part. It's almost almost like a Kevin Smith movie which I don't want to associate Kathy Koja with Kevin Smith, 
but it, it has that very low lo-fi feeling, um, but is obviously much better than anything Kevin Smith ever did. I'm sorry if you like Kevin Smith, but um, Kathy Koja, one of the best prose stylists I've ever read. Uh, it's one of the best books I've ever read. It, it moved me to my core. I've never empathized with a character, or I haven't in a very long time as much as I empathized with Austin, the protagonist. Kathy Koja rules also, by the way. If you watch interviews with her, you'll kind of get the vibe. Still reading a lot. We'll see how many uh, books I crack. I think the total so far is 39 or 40 for the year. Give those the old shot -erino.